It's a great pleasure to welcome Bongani Mabaso, the Group Chief Technology Officer of the Ultron Group. Uh, Bongani, firstly, it's a, a great honor to welcome you. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Aki. Thank you for having me on the show. That's a pleasure. I was looking at your website, and one of the core parts of Ultron's strategy is to invest in data as a service. And we know how big data is. It's all about AI and data today. While scaling Ultron Security, you've got Ultron FinTech as well as NetStar. Why are these businesses uh, a key area of focus for the Ultron Group? Yeah, I think if you know if you, if, you, if you look at the data, you know mandate, which which actually happens to sit in my in my portfolio, Aki. Um, you know we we generate quite a bit of data across our our, our businesses. So if you think of FinTech uh, with the point of sale devices, we've got a, a payment uh, switch. Uh, you know, we see, uh, we have some insight into some of the payment flows that happen in the country. Of course, not as large as the banks, uh, but certainly we get an interesting uh, perspective and a slice of that. Uh, if you think about health tech uh, that does medical claim switching uh, and having 60 to 70 percent of that market in there. So we understand, you know, some of the flows that happen from a health technology perspective. Uh, and then similarly with Netstar, right, uh, being one of the leading telematics companies in the country, we understand vehicle movements, you know, people movements, etc. So all of that combined, it turns out that you can use that sort of data for a whole lot of interesting use cases. Things like precision marketing to, you know, prevention of, of crime, you know, alternative credit scoring models uh, to helping insurers better reduce risk and serve their clients better, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm. So I think we're just really well positioned uh, as a business to help our clients to, you know, even help, you know, uh, deliver better value to, the, to their clients as well. Um, so I think that's why those businesses are very well diversified. Uh, I think, um, you know, people know Ultron as, as being an IT services provider mostly. I mean, certainly before I joined, I only knew the IT services side of things. Uh, but I think people forget that we also have the product side, you know, in Nenstar, FinTech and HealthTech. And I think that's why, you know, that diversified portfolio has, has stood the test of time. Yeah, I mean, that, that's uh, you're certainly right there. I mean, you've got quite a diverse portfolio of products. You know, just looking through your website and I was saying, I didn't know that Ultron does this. <laughs> I, you know, it's, it's <laughs> the, and, and I mean, there must be so many different companies under that Ultron umbrella. I, I don't know exactly how, how many, but we mentioned AI and obviously AI is just a massive topic. It's a revolutionizing business. It's been doing it for the last few years. And even going back a few decades, I know that at Ultron, you guys have been applying AI, you know, for a very long time. But it, it's it, it's really uh, growing exponentially at the moment, and it's impacting every single aspect of business today. It's a big topic of discussion in 2024, as it was last year. What is your stance towards AI, and, and how are you guys at Ultron using it in your various businesses? Yeah. So I think firstly, Aki, you know, and I think it was Elon Musk that mentioned this, that any company that uses AI in the long run will outperform a company that does not use AI. I mean, if you look at the productivity gains, you know, you know, dev teams are able to develop, you know, code just so much faster than they, they would before, right? Where you didn't have a coding assistant, as an example. Uh, the ability to automate processes that are routine uh, to ensure that we can, you know, focus our time on what really matters most, right? Which is uh, del delivering value to our clients. And so we actually have AI embedded in, in quite a few of our products, actually. If you think about Netstar, uh, a lot of what we do would not be possible without AI. You know, from the AI cameras that we've deployed in various uh, fleets, uh, you know, to the way that we detect, uh, you know, false alarms, you know, when somebody presses, accidentally presses, a, you know, their panic button, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there's AI deployed in the fintech business. We've got AI deployed in helping us to collect uh, from our customers, help clients collect their money better. Uh, you know, so we have it everywhere in our businesses. But I think what's really important for us as a business going forward with regards to AI is how we can make sure that we infuse it with data that we have, right? If you think about what's different between a Google or a Microsoft versus an Ultron is that the data sets that we have access to are local in nature. They're very contextual. They respond to the needs of our people, right? So can we infuse the vast amounts of data sets that we are sitting on as Ultron with AI capability to then make sure that we can deliver value, uh, you know, in a very contextual way. Um, one of the, you know, the aspects of AI that I like to give an example about is, is language. You know, language might seem like a very straightforward thing, and we might actually believe that uh, the big companies have solved it, but actually it's not true. They haven't solved it. 
Um, you know, it takes only a, you know, anyone with a second or first language, uh, Zulu or Sutu, you know, kind of uh, the high, high school diploma uh, to understand that those translations that they give you are often very, very inaccurate, right? So can we, can we mm. develop local solutions that are much more accurate and contextual, you know, in picking up nuances in the English South African accent, for example, uh, you know, so, so those types of things might seem like they're small, but actually they are barriers to entry to unlocking the full value of AI uh, in the country. And so that's what we believe, uh, you know, is the niche that we can focus on to make sure that we use local infused uh, data uh, with AI capabilities, no matter where they develop from, right? whether it's from the east or the west, we can use it together to make sure that we can deliver contextual solutions that are relevant for our clients. That's very interesting. Now, you yourself have, have and I've been following your career, you've worked in both in the public as well as the private uh, sectors, yes. and you've held major roles in both of those sectors. How do you leverage this to build strong public-private partnerships? Because we see at the moment that there's a massive appetite from government to you know, deploy and really aggressively pursue those public-private partnerships, and we're seeing some great results come out of it. What are those opportunities that you see uh, for the Altron Group in this regard? Yeah, absolutely. I think you're spot on in asking that question. Um, and if, you know, if, you, if I continue on the theme of data, I mean, what is the South African government uh, sitting on? You know, that is a huge commodity. Well, it's, the, it's data, right, on us as citizens, uh, whether it's home affairs or transport, uh, health, etc. It's sitting on a tremendous amount of data. You know, can we work together as pu public and private? Uh, to unlock that data, right, to, to help better serve, you know, our people. You know, anything from understanding where we should be placing uh, clinics uh, all the way to, you know, where is the burden of disease, uh, you know, most are prevalent in the country, and then making sure that we can direct resources towards those particular areas. So I think there's a lot to be done there. Um, I think it's early days. Uh, we've certainly seen some positive um you know, movements from the Department of Communications and, uh, and Digital Technology, you know, indicating that they're very open to, to partnering with, uh, with, uh, with the private sector. Uh, so I think it's going to pick up uh, over time. And hopefully with the, with the G GNU that's been formed now, we'll only see that strengthened uh, over time so that we can, we, you know, we can definitely work together as South Africans to make sure that we can alleviate some of the problems that we're facing as a country. Yeah, you spot on. It's technology that's going to pull this country to the next level. You know, as you said, using that data to accelerate the way we do things, do things better, eliminate unnecessarily, uh, you know, costs. And really, uh, at the end of the day, it's uh, technology has been demonstrated over the decades that really spurs economies forward. When we talk about technology and these different sectors, obviously, AI is going to be around for a long, long time. What technology or sector are you most excited about uh, throughout this year, perhaps 2024, and even looking beyond? And why would that be? Yeah, I think there's a whole range. I mean, if I speak, let me speak from from the group's perspective and then also my own kind of personal perspective. I think from a group perspective, we are excited about multiple technologies. Uh, I think that the power of cloud computing, um, you know, and helping our clients, you know, figure that out, uh, and especially, you know, this this concept of hybrid cloud, you know. Before everyone wanted to use move everything into public cloud, but people are starting to realize perhaps you know that's not uh, necessarily what I should do. Uh, if you take the CrowdStrike outage that happened um, you know a few weeks ago, where one change uh, made by you know a person you know presumably sitting in a coffee shop in the in the in the west coast of America made one change, and then airlines across the world, banks, etc., just stopped working. I mean, people are starting to realize. Look, we need to be much more resilient, uh, you know, in our IT infrastructure. And so hybrid cloud has emerged as the key way to take things forward. And so, you know, I think people are going to start to go, look, yes, there's some things that must be in public cloud, but also I want private cloud infrastructure. I want infrastructure that's available locally. I want to be way more resilient, right? So, yes, I can use, you know, non-core services and make sure that they are in public cloud, highly available, et cetera. But the things that are really core, I want to make sure that no matter what happens on the West Coast of America, I can continue to run that service. So I think that trend will continue to increase. And certainly we've seen clients, you know, start to inquire about that. How do I, you know, improve resilience in my, in my business? Uh, I think the other one, obviously, IKEA, I'm biased in this way, is going to be AI. Uh, I think AI has, a, you know, for me, it's, we're sitting with a lot of untapped potential. And I know there's this, uh, you know, fear around jobs, you know, to go, you know, you know is it going to take away jobs, et cetera? But I think you have to take it back to, you know, uh, the steam engine, you know, automation, factories being automated, et cetera. 
what has happened you know you know to those jobs right when people were doing things manually and then automation came to be well they reskilled uh, they started, you know, learning how to drive tractors as opposed to, you know, just a man with a with a spade or, or you know, uh, you know, a fork spade, etc. You know, you know, that dig the ground. So, so scales transform over time. This is not a new problem. It's it's been something that's been there, you know, throughout human existence. And I think sometimes we've overplayed, uh, you know, the uh, the you know the social side to go look. People are going to lose jobs and mass. I think you know people, you know, at the same time, you don't want to downplay it and say it's not a risk. I think it's incumbent upon us to make sure that we reskill people, right? We are sitting with a, a large asset, which is young people in this country and even in the continent, young people that are eager to learn. Absolutely, they can be trained uh, to use AI. AI is very accessible. You know, my wife, uh, you know, she, she's in the arts, uh, but she uses AI to do, a, you know, a advertising, you know, to, to do pamphlets and flyers, etc. So, you don't really need a university degree just to be able to leverage AI to help you to do things better, right? It's accessible to anyone, you know? So it's not just the guys with a PhD and, a, you know, you're a software engineer, et cetera. Anyone can start to use it to help them be more productive. And I think that's the path that we need to uh, take as a country to go, how do we now embrace this technology and make sure our young people are infused with it to make them more, you know, economically viable in the market? So it's not about knowing how to code necessarily. It's about how can I, as a person, Plan my trade and then use AI as a multiplier, right? To make sure that I, I'm much more productive than, than, than my peer. And that in that way, I think we'll protect jobs as we adopt AI. Yeah, well said, well said. You know, it's, uh, it's really about unlocking value. Yeah. And as you mentioned, you know, AI is touching all of our lives some way or another. And it's, uh, we, we've got to embrace it because it's not going anywhere. It's right. going to grow exponentially. We need to embrace it and we need to upskill ourselves. It's as simple yeah. as that. So you guys, it sounds like you're working on some really, really exciting projects at Ultron. Tell us about some of the exciting projects or initiatives that you have on the horizon that you that you can share with us, Bongani. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, uh, Aiki. Look, while I can't reveal everything, I have to keep some of, <laughs> some of our cards hidden. But, you know, I think what you'll see in the health health division is a mo much more focus on the on the patient. Uh, you know, so right now our business model in that space is business to business to consumer, uh, but we're also starting to shift towards business to consumer. So how can we provide consumer facing applications that help clients with their health journey end to end, you know, from fitness to, you know, if you're sick with a, a specific dreaded disease, how do we help you to manage that, provide you with services to help you to do that better? So I think that focus is going to continue to increase. Uh, I think you also start to see some uh, global expansion in key places. Uh, in key areas, uh, such as in our telematics business, for example. So, so those are some of the things that are in the in the in the shorter term horizon. Uh, in the longer term, uh, I, I think you'll start to see much more investment in our data uh, data and AI capabilities across the board. Whether that it is in the IT services business or even from a platform perspective, where we provide original services uh, to our clients that are much more contextual and respond to some of the needs uh, in the country and even in the continent. Um, so those are some of the things that are coming uh, in the future horizons. Well, it sounds really, really exciting. And, uh, and you guys are, are, are paving the way for the next 60 years at Ultron. Dr. Bongani Mabaso, the Chief, Group Chief Technology Officer of Ultron Group. Uh, Dr. Mabaso, thank you so much for joining us for this episode of What's Next. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it.